Finally, folks, this is the day where we can talk about the new Sony A7 V sensor because now three sources told me the same specs, so I feel confident to share uh, the rumor. Keep in mind, it's always a rumor, so we never know for sure until the day of the announcement that will happen on December 2, which is also a rumor, by the way. But <laughs> anyway, three sources told me the sensor specs and the good news up front, it's a new sensor. So the Sony E75 will use a new fast sensor. And today I want to talk about a couple of specs of this sensor. Before we kick off, the usual reminder to first of all, like this video to help me YouTube algorithm, and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss out the upcoming rumors. First of all, thanks to the three sources, one trusted and two new sources that shared info about the Sony E75 and I think that info is now correct. There are more sources also trusted that promised to send me more info in the next day. So what I'm going to share today are a couple of confirmed specs. Confirmed means that all at least three sources told me the same thing. Uh, but there are more specs that we share in the next video. So definitely stay tuned for more. Uh, but now let's talk about the sensor. The Sony A7 V will use a brand new 33 partially stuck sensor. So that's what the sources are telling me. And this is great news because it, first of all, it's a relief to know that we are not stuck with the older Sony A7 IV sensor, which for photo was okay, but uh, the readout speed was very slow. So rolling shutter was an issue. For video, we didn't get what current cameras from Nikon, Panasonic and Canon can offer. So it was really uh, not up to date. And the good news, it will use this new partially stuck sensor made by Sony. It's the world's highest resolution partially stuck sensor. So as you know, the Nikon Z 63 and the Lumix S12 do use a 24 megapixel partially stuck sensor made by Sony unofficially so uh, there's no official statement but I think it's made by Sony and uh, I think it's a wise step from Sony to give us a partially stuck sensor that has 33 megapixel resolution it's way more usable at least uh, for my private use I think also for most of you uh, 33 megapixel gives you more flexibility than for 24 megapixel so uh, this is great news uh, it also means that the sensor is fast so the, uh, it has a fast readout and um, now let's talk specifically what to expect from this sensor um, first of all the Canon R6 Mark Three doesn't use a partially or fully stuck sensor. So it's a more classic sensor. Still, it has fast readout. So having partially stuck sensor doesn't mean that it's automatically superior to a, a normal, regular new sensor. Um, so keep that in mind. The partially stuck sensor had one big topic when it was implemented on Nikon Z63 because the dynamic range on the Nikon Z63 at base mid ISO was quite disappointing pointing there was a drop in image quality but the good news is that lumix found a way with the s12 to get rid of this he received a dynamic range measurement made by photons to photos and he's very accurate and you can see that s12 has a very normal dynamic range performance this is because the lumix has a dynamic range boost mode that you can switch on on or off. And basically the trade-off here is that uh, if on the Lumix you have the dynamic range uh, mode on, you have a higher dynamic range, but you have a slower readout speed that CineD measured at 27.5 milliseconds. When you have the dynamic boost off, it's 12.7 milliseconds. So the question mark here is if this new 33 megapixel partially stuck sensor has the same kind of limitation of the 24 megapixel sensor and if Sony eventually gives us the option to choose between high image quality or faster readout speed that's something I haven't been told by the uh, sources so I hope the trusted sources down the road will tell me more about this uh, but I do expect this sensor to have a uh, high image quality and high uh, readout and not have the issues that Nikon Z63 had at the beginning so that's my first note for this sensor um i don't have any other info about the sensor specifically like uh, if there is an upgrade in general over the 24 megapixel partially stuck sensor design that's something i don't know also the sources that i talked with didn't get an info from sony about this just a general info 33 megapixel partially stuck sensor now let's move on to the second spec that i will share today the camera can do 30 frames per seconds in electronic shutter mode. And this is 
10 frames per second less than a Canon R6 Mark III. I can do 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. I don't know uh, if this is something Sony could improve via future firmware update and give us even a faster frame rate. Uh, this is just my guessing. I guess that Sony didn't want to have a camera that performs better than the A12, which also does 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. My feeling is that Sony's marketing thinking was like, we cannot give 40 or 50 frames per second on a camera that costs around $3,000. So the price will be below $3,000 compared to the Sony A12, which is priced at close to $7,000. I think I can guess that this was more like the thinking, but the Canon can do 40 frames per second. So, uh, I don't know if Sony uh, made the right choice here or if eventually they can up the performance via future firmware update. I have the feeling they could do it, so um, maybe we should press the Sony to just work on a firmware update to catch up with the Canon, uh, regardless if the Sony A12 lags uh, a tiny bit behind. I think the Sony A12 uh, also is placed anywhere in a different league because it has a 50 megapixel fully stack sensor, so it has much more data to read out, so they don't have uh to to uh you are comparing apple and oranges here that's my opinion so uh hopefully sony will just up the game to 40 frames per second keep in mind that the canon can do 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode in 12 bit not in 14 bit so i don't know what the sony will be able to do in 30 frames per second we know that the sony 12 can do 30 frames per second electronic shutter mode in 12 bit and 20 frames per second in 14 bit so that's an info I don't know, I don't have yet, but I should get soon, so um, the Sony E75 um, mic uh, can do um, in electro electronic shutter modes 20 frames per second with 14 bit, which would be an advantage over the Canon R6 Mark III, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me in the comments. If I did a mistake, then I would put the note down in the comment system. So, um, in general, I'm... As you know, I'm no fan of the electronic shutter mode because it gives still some artifacts and distortions, so it's not 100% reliable and I don't like that fact. Um, that's why I love, for example, the global shutter where uh, you don't have those artifacts with electronic shutter, you still can get them. Uh, I rely more on mechanical shutter. But let me know now in the comment system what you think about the Sony A75 having 10 frames per second less in electronic shutter mode than a Canon. But Keep in mind, we still don't know uh, if uh, Sony can do the 14-bit frame rate version longer, faster than uh, the Canon. So uh, it might be that, that at the end, the Sony E75 still will be better because it has 14-bit in probably 20 frames per second and the Canon doesn't have it. So uh, not a big deal in my opinion, the difference here. Now, moving on to the mechanical shot. And here there might be a small disappointment because the Sony A75 will have 10 frames per second mechanical shutter just like the Sony A7 IV, so there has been no improvement. And by comparison, the Canon can do uh, 12 frames per second mechanical shutter, so not a big deal. So two frames, it's not, uh, doesn't make that difference. It's not something that will move people to buy the Canon set of the Sony. But I would have loved to see an improvement, but I feel that also in this case, the Sony marketing simply didn't want to outperform the Sony A1 2, which does also 10 frames per second mechanical shutter. Uh, probably in the, just guessing that, that in their mind they think uh, we cannot um, bring a camera that can do 15 frames per second mechanical shutter. Uh, again, forget, again, they're comparing, if this is their thinking, and maybe I'm wrong, they're comparing Apple and Aura just again because the Sony A12 has a 50 megapixel sensor. So uh, it's totally placed in a totally different league, in my opinion. Uh, so I would love to have got more also because one of the sources claims and i'm not 100 sure about that that actually it, this is a limitation put in place by sony it actually could do more so uh, we have to when the sony a75 uh, we get launched press a bit to give us uh, a, an increased frame rate you know in future of firmware update if that's the case if indeed there is no hardware limitation i think they should just match what the canon does in my opinion uh but of course we're talking about small differences 10 12 so it's not really a big thing uh let me read the last info i can share today because i have more info so uh but about that i will talk later 
but this is the last I can share today. The good news obviously is having a new 33 megapixel partially stuck sensor that is uh, fast with readout gives us also benefits in video and I've been told it doesn't have to crop anymore at 4K 60p. So that's gone, okay? So uh, that's a good news. I have more specs about video and other stuff that I got from uh, another source, but I'm awaiting confirmation for other, from other sources just to not do mistakes. So be patient and uh, subscribe to the channel because I think in the next days I will share more details about this camera, but I wanted to share the details where I have a triple confirmation. Uh, those are the four specs. It has a 33 megapixel partially stuck sensor, by the way, not fully stuck sensor because that would be more expensive. So the partially stuck sensor uh, allows you to not go crazy with the pricing of the camera, even if the price of the camera is rumored to be close to $3,000. So not uh, affordable as the Sony a a 7 IV, which now sells for $2,000. So uh, if you don't care, for example, about speed and video, I think the Sony a 7 IV might still be a very good buy for you if you're more kind uh, like a photographer and you don't need the new AI chip, which the Sony a 7 V will have. Um, so, summing up the specs, so 33 megapixel partially stuck sensor, 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, don't know, uh, I guess it is 12 bit and maybe there is an option with 20 frames per second in electronic shutter mode in 14 bit, just like on the Sony A12, but that's my guess. It has 10 frames per second mechanical shutter, that's confirmed, it has no crop in 4K 60p, and now summing up also the other specs I told you in my previous video, it has the same Sony A7R5 body, which means the same LCD screen, fully articulating screen, the same two times dual type A and SD slot, uh, obviously same battery, same uh, IBIS performance, 8 stops, the EVF resolution looks like has been improved. I don't have the data yet. The Sony a7 IV has a 3.67 million dot EVF, same as, like, as the Canon. Uh, looks like the Sony a7 V will have a better improved EVF over 5 million dot, but this has to be confirmed. It has no C5 button on the front. Uh, obviously that's more for the professional camera, so that's no big deal. Uh, it has the dual USB-C port. It gets rid of the micro USB-C port, which everybody hated so that's also an improvement and the camera will be announced according to the sources on December 2 at around 3 p.m. London time uh, I don't know what time it is in your time zone make the calc I will have a live blogging on soniafrumos.com so definitely check out the website subscribe the newsletter and follow the live blogging there where I will cover all the news the reviews that I find the uh, small uh, hidden gem of info that are very could be important when the Sony a 7 5 will be announced. I will also make a YouTube video and down in the description box right now in this video, I have search links to the Sony a 7 5 to BH Photo and Amazon. Basically on the day of the announcement, those links will find the camera and you can pre-order it. You can also click on those links today uh, and just buy something, whatever you want and I get a small commission and this is a nice way to support me without you paying any cent. Um, I told you already yesterday that um, only a small batch, batch of camera will ship before Christmas, so pre-order us up, that's my advice. Uh, and as you know, I'm not one guy that uh, um, buys a lot of gear. I have very few lenses and cameras, uh, but I always advise you to pre-order the day of the announcement because then you don't have to wait months to get the camera and you can always cancel a pre-order or send back the camera if you're not satisfied with the camera. In the next days I will catch up uh, and work on those details so that you have the full picture and you get a sense of how good the camera will be. But in general I am op uh, happy now, optimist that this will be a good camera, that it will sell well. Uh, also, because I also think so the Sony buying the Sony system is more than just a camera. It's about the possibility of getting different kinds of cameras with the same mount. It's uh, the lenses mainly because they are the really uh, rule mostly in most areas. They have extraordinary lenses, and then we have a ton of their third-party lenses. So definitely. Uh, be there December 2 on sonyofrumos.com. If you have more info about this camera that you can share, you can contact me using this email address and contact form. And again, with all the ups and downs and limitation of an Italian guy talking about rumors, uh, not uh, in native English language. And uh, also I have to 
personally confess those two months were crazy for me at my private work. So it was very difficult for me. And probably I went over the limit working on rumors and on my private work uh, because you think doing rumors work, rumors work is easy, but what you see is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's a lot of work behind just to get to that info, a lot of discussion with sources, a lot of uh, misleading information that I have to filter out. And uh, the proof that, that I'm doing an okay job is the fact that basically you're this is the only channel that shared the leaked image of the Sony A7 V, the only one that te it tells you that it's coming December 2, the only one telling you all those specs. Count on me on being reliable most of the time, um, and I'm happy that I gave you this info today. Now I'm truly exhausted, I'm going back to my regular work, and I hope that by late afternoon sources will give me some more info, and then uh, you can expect me move to make a new video tomorrow after tomorrow with the additional info. Okay, folks? See you very soon.